this is kind of awesome on a bunch of fronts. Let's let's go let's go live to gold is real money, but buy Trump coin. And um, in this, uh, it's just this is gonna be fun. Um, uh, MTG's side piece interviewed Trump on uh, on RSBN down at Mar-a-Lago, and um, I'm making myself yawn because of his fucking yawn. I've got contagious yawn, motherfucker. Anyways. Um, he, they, they do this interview and it says RSBN exclusive interview with Donald Trump from Mar-a-Lago is the title of, uh, the video. I can't judge you because I can't scroll down, but, um, RSBN exclusive interview with the president, president Donald Trump from Mar-a-Lago. It is a 38 minute, um, video and the, it's, it, his interview doesn't start till 15 minutes in. So and and the rest of it is all ads for my pillow and RSBN and gold and all this other shit. Fucking fifteen minutes. These assholes are milking the shit out of this. And if Trump saw this, he'd be pissed because they're making money and he's broke. All right. So this is the interview. He was just up there, you know, bumping uglies with Marge. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the super chat and and Beverly as well. Towards a new hard drive. Thank you. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. All right, uh, and it's not so much the hard drive. It's the time I'm going to have to spend re like downloading and signing into software. Yummy. Okay, here we go. So uh, this is the interview. Text the word Trump to 989898 to get that. Yeah, don't do that. Free information kit about investing in precious metals. And I think it's fucking amazing. Text Trump to that number. Like, he's not getting fucking money from that insofar as I know. Like, he's got to be fucking pissed. And gold. We'll have yeah. more about that a little bit later in the broadcast. But first, here is... And if he is getting money, how is it not an illegal campaign contribution? That's nuts. My exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview... Really? You didn't double-team him with Marge? ...with President Trump for Mar-a-Lago. Mr. President, once again, thank you so much for your time uh, that you're going to spend with us uh, tonight. Yes, all 13 minutes that we'll cut out of the 27 you've allowed us. Also, um, no, it's okay. I don't need a glass of water, and I don't think you do either. And um, by the way, can I just com like compliment you on your weird, perchy way of you of sitting forward on your diaper, leaning towards me with your hands arranged in such a way that it makes kind of a mangina. It's a, it's a fascinating, anyways, you're my hero. Uh, first question. I want to get into the war in Ukraine now. Uh, well, that's easy. Um, uh, you can talk to Malcolm Nance. I'm sure he could find you a, a you know, a, a taxi ride to the front lines. Under your administration, there was world peace. We didn't have all this chaos in the world. We were still in Afghanistan and we were fighting in Syria and supplying arms to Saudi Arabia over Yemen. He pulled, but in, he did pull American soldiers out of, out of African countries. So there's that, I guess. Um, now it seems like it's, we had world peace. Relating even to, yeah, we were, in all fairness, there was a giant pandemic. It's really hard to conduct a big war in a pandemic. Armia is even in the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've said before on social media and at speeches that you have a solution and you said, hey, this can be negotiated. How do we do that? Yeah. Tell them, like, that's it. Details. Thanks for asking them right out of the gate. What's the, what, what's the key to this? How do we, how do we get past this stuff, man? How do we get like, and, and something we could, I mean, if he had a, if he was a, there's his phone, his phone's on the table. He could record this and maybe later on convert it to text and turn it into an actual five-point plan. And then somebody with, I don't know, Putin's phone number could do it. Well, first of all, it should have never started. Yeah, that, it doesn't fucking matter. It's, uh, that's silly. And I agree, but Russia attacked. Talk to them. It would have never started had I been president. There was no chance of this war starting. And Frank Also, horseshit. I don't think Putin wanted to do it. I think. Yeah, he felt he just had to. You know what I mean? He, he just. He fought it, fought it as long as he could. But then it's just like an impulse. You know what I mean? It's like walking past a pack of cigarettes after you've been trying to quit. It's just, oh, 
Man, remember the days when we could strafe bomb and rape squad? Remember that? Oh, it's right there, though. It's like, I don't want to do it, but huh. Sort of forced in by the statements being made by Biden. Yes, he, he was forced to do this because Biden was, I don't know, trying to pass an infrastructure bill. And it's something so sad to see, because no matter what happens now, it can never be like it could have been with nobody dead and with no cities demolished because you. Yeah, that's 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 true. Um, that's also true of uh, the entire Donbass and Crimean region um, before and after the Euromaidan. At some of these cities, they're absolutely in ashes. This uh, one city, they were flying over it. There was not one building standing. So, it by the way, he's talking about uh, like. Was it Mariupol? It was like, he's talking about the place where everybody was held up in the steel factory. He's talking about video he saw eight months ago. It would have never, ever happened, but it did happen. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're all caught up to now. You've excused yourself and created the fantasy that you would have magically two weeks after your healthcare plan and two weeks after your, your economic plan and two weeks after your um, all three phases of the China deal would go through and two weeks after you get, you give people your taxes, you would have come up with them. The, oh, and two weeks after the Afghanistan exit plan after that. Uh, with that being said, it can be negotiated. I think within 24 hours, uh, it really has to be done from the office of the president and you have to get them both in a room. And there are things you can say to each one of them, which I won't reveal now because you have no fucking idea. Or it's simply, if you don't stop, I will nuke both of you. <laughs> there are two things you can say. Uh, you say to Vladimir Putin, um, stop fighting, I'll kill them for you. And Zelensky, you're not getting anything else because you didn't give me an investigation into my political opponent. So these men are going to take you and put you in Gitmo. <laughs> that's, I won't reveal that, but that's basically... Thank you, Ninka Krinkles. Sure guarantee that this war will end yes um is it just i'm spitballing is it klatu verata nikto is it am i in the am i warm at all immediately alec like alakazam abracadabra any of those words ring a bell they have to do it because what's happening is a horror it's a horror and horror it's a horror horror this is I don't know how many times I've got to say it was horror. I swallowed a bug. Far more people are being killed than what they're talking about. You know, they're talking about numbers that are nothing by comparison to what the real numbers are. When they knock down those big apartment houses and when they knock out cities and they say two people died or three people were hurt, that's not right. <laughs> well, I'm sure they miss their shit. But you do realize people, they evacuate people during the major parts of the bombing. You, you do, you do realize that. So I think the numbers are far greater. That'll be revealed at a later date. But cool. And it never would have happened. Fine. What are the magic words? What's the magic peace word? Are you going to sing imagine? Imagine there's no heaven. You have to do something about it. That Great. Do something then. Make a, you got to say, you got pooty pooed on speed dial. Dig it up, dickhead. Press to stop. And it has to stop now. And well, it's not going to stop now. It is not going to stop now. It isn't. It's is not going to stop now. So, okay, plan B. It's easy to do. All right, if it's easy to do, tell him. In deference to this simpleton, you can. if it's that easy, even this fuckhead could figure it out. If it's easy, say what it is. What's the thing? What will they respond to? Do you show them a... You're going to show Putin a picture of his fucking house like he did with um, uh, Abdul. We talked to a lot of Americans. No, 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 no. You don't get to move on from that shit. That's when you go, yeah, but I mean, you say it's easy, but like, can you give us a fucking hint? What are you talking about? It's obviously, and they are concerned about, we just keep, keep sending money. It's a, it's a blank check. Yeah, that's because they listen to your show and you're an idiot and that's what you told them and they start, re like, you only talk to people who watch RSBN. Of course they're simpletons. That there's no audit, there's no checks and balances. Yes, there are. We literally had auditors over there this month, last month.
it's February now. Obviously, you would be for ordering. Yeah, you, you ordering. You would definitely be for sending otters over there, pro obviously with bombs attached to their cute little furry little bodies. Um, wh why would you think that he would be for s sending auditors to Ukraine when he was against them for PPP loans? Ukraine, sure, sure. yeah. Well, I think we're sending probably at least 10 times what Europe has sent. I believe we're really at $107 billion, maybe more than that. And Europe is at a tiny fraction of that number. And obviously, Europe's affected much more than we are. They're right there. They're closer. You look at Germany, it's always been very hard to get them involved and others. This is brilliant. have been very, very difficult to get them involved. And the numbers are not fair. It's just not fair to the United States. And I feel horribly for the people of Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, it... it if these countries that are, you know, have economies that are smaller than one of our states, than one of eight of our states, can't kick in equal to what the United States is kicking in, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Ukrainians, you're just going to have to die. I feel horribly for the people of Russia. No, yeah. I mean, they're all, everybody's suffering, and it's... Are they, though? get solved but when you look at the united states with maybe 10 times the amount it's it's a number that's astronomical the difference. yeah in your head it is because every number is astronomical he's the brokest rich person on the fucking planet so every number with more than five zeros makes him oh my god look i just how can i get a slice of that it's very much like nato when i got involved with nato uh, most of the countries weren't paying or they were not paying their fair share there were only seven countries that were paying their fair share. And I said, that's not going to be. And <coughs> you can't do that <coughs> when I'm drinking. Jesus. <coughs> I'm alive. Oh my God. <clears throat> it went down the wrong pipe. Because we went back to, he almost careened into, <clears throat> I'll be fine. <clears throat> he almost careened into admitting that NATO has been stepping up their game and we have more parity with them already. And while we're, we have more, so we're giving more to Ukraine, the, Everybody is doing that more than their NATO amount to Ukraine, which is not even a NATO country. Anyways, <coughs> back to where we were. Sorry. Okay, keep playing. Hold on. Where is he? There he is. Within a short period of time. Oh, God. A very short period. So 24 hours. It's so easy. Uh, we had hundreds of billions of dollars being sent in. And nobody else was able to do it. Not Bush, not Obama, nobody. And I got it done. I had one meeting and then the second meeting I went. I had to get a little, you know, I had to gain a little bit of knowledge, but I did notice. I said, you know, why aren't these people paid up? I used the word delinquent. They were delinquent. And when I went in the second time, I said, look, we have a problem. Nobody. Yeah. And by the way, um, that <coughs> if anybody wants to say that NATO started a buildup that made Putin nervous, If there were any case to be made, because it certainly wasn't NATO saying we're going to we're, we're adding Ukraine and we're going to put shit on their border or any of that stuff. If if there was anything that you could link back to Russia getting nervous because NATO's strength was growing is because this asshole asked uh, Europe to kick in more money and the U.S. didn't diminish our take, you know, our our input at all. He's paying, <coughs> not paying your fair share. The United States was paying for. Everybody, in a sense. I mean, I believe the United States was paying close to 100% of NATO. Yeah, I don't care what you believe. Quote the numbers or shut the fuck up. So ridiculous. And yes, everything you say is ridiculous. But again, how is it anybody goes, what do you mean you, nobody stops him and goes, wait a minute, what do you mean you believe? You were president of the United States. You didn't see the figures at any point? 
You you said you had a meeting and you got a little more information. And you came back and they added money, more money in. You didn't actually. Who the fuck was giving you your breakdown? Was everybody in this dickhead's cabinet completely a wall? Really, is a protection of Europe, and so I would say that uh, yeah, we got to be smarter. And the money they have is money that I got. You know, the reason they have money right now, I believe we got four hundred and forty billion dollars paid into NATO in a fairly short period of time. They asked a question, well, does that mean that if we're not paid, the United States will not defend us against Russia if something should happen? I said, you mean you're not paid up? Yes, sir. They said, that's what it means. We will not defend you. And money poured in like nobody's ever seen. And the... Because they knew a Russian invasion of Ukraine was inevitable. And Russia has admitted that there was that was their always their intent, and Moldova was going to be part of it, and then on to Poland, on to Berlin. Secretary General, the the <coughs> gentleman that runs at Stoltenberg, uh, who's a good man, he said, uh, I think he, he runs the Stoltenberg. My biggest fan. Now he may not be anymore because you know politically it may not be correct for him to say, oh Trump was great. What he said was. There's never been anything like it. I've never seen anything like it because he's been there a long time and other people before him. And you take a look and you ask him and you should ask him because of his. Yeah, you're talking to an RSBN host. He's never going to have the he's not going to interview a foreign leader. You're not on a real news network. That That's like. It's like saying to me, like, uh, ask Megan and Harry, uh, you know, their favorite shopping. You'll, they'll tell you. It's just the same. He said, I never saw anything like it. It was amazing. So they have the money to do what they're doing now because of what I did with the countries that were not paid. Which they shouldn't be doing. All right, let's shift our attention over to the southern border. I think more Americans are more concerned yeah. about what's going on at our southern border. Once again, under your administration, we had low border crossings, really relatively no drugs coming across the border. Bullshit. Also, because uh, of COVID. Now, over 300 people a day die of some kind of fentanyl poisoning. Uh, what's your plans on the border, obviously, to restore the wall, but many are asking for some type of... Hold on one second. Beg your pardon. Uh, hold on. Whoops. Let me try this. Uh, and I can do here, and then I gotta take this over here, bring this down, and move this over here. Give me one second. Um, mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> Let's see. Well, here's a uh, it's a couple of um Yeah, so Let's see. Obviously, <clears throat> drug involved uh overdose deaths 1999 to 2020. Um, this is, if I may, hold on one second. I've got to swing this down so you guys can see. Um, display, here we go here. Yeah, so. Um, okay, i got to move this up here. That's what I need to do. And then drag this part down so we can see more of it. Beg your pardon, take this frame out of the way, but you'll see it there. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> this is, um, if you look at this, it's 20, the, the last number, the 91,799, that's 2020. Here's the four years of the Trump presidency right here. Um, now, as fentanyl and then, a, you know, a mix of fentanyl and benzos is what's killing everybody. And what you're seeing is this track of during this time, uh, especially from 2017 to 2020, you saw an incredible rise in the availability of fentanyl. And it's in and 
coding everything. And one of the biggest causes of death is the mixture of normal drugs and fentanyl and benzodiazepines. Um, this is Trump's last year in office right here. There you go. Of the first time America hit 100,000 um, overdose deaths, 91,799 happened in the last calendar year of Trump's presidency. Not to, never mind the rest of January of 2021 while he still was president. So that's kind of enough. Look at this jump. That's, he was in, this is, here's where you take it. It's, on a, it's definitely on an arc. A little downplay during the Obama years, it starts to arc down. But then as we get into 2015, 2016, major drug related deaths and it spikes, it dips a touch. Um, this is the total. In men, there was a slight decrease and then it just shot the fuck up. Most of the people dying are men. Just, just for the record, just putting that out there, if I may. War on the drug cartels, and, and if that was possible, but what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, what, what, how do we explain to everybody who's watching at home how you would just like uh, open fire, or you'd fire missiles into Mexico? So we had the safest border in the history of our country, or at least recorded history. I guess maybe a thousand years ago was even better, right? There, there was no, there was no border. Of, that was there's no country. It's we're only two hundred forty. But we had the safest in the history of our country. Uh, I built. Yes, because everyone was staying home. The border didn't factor because. Mexicans were afraid to come here because we had more cases than Mexico did. Hundreds of miles of wall. I got uh, Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers. Yes, most of the walls is made out of the bodies of Mexican soldiers. It's how they paid for it. Free by using our economic power. And I had a great relationship with the president of Mexico. Same but using our economic work. power, we were able to get 28,000 soldiers for nothing. And we created Stay mm -hmm. in Mexico. We also created a uh, system. We, we started stay in Mexico. First of all, he means remain in Mexico. Stay in Mexico is, I mean, it, it is just another Trump exaggeration. Remain in Mexico until we figure out your status. Nah, fuck that. Stay in Mexico. You're never getting in. That nobody thought possible. If you're sick, you can't come into our country. And nobody even knew about that but me. <laughs> Fauci told him. And we had the safest border in history. Because COVID. We have. I mean, he just admitted. He just admitted it was COVID. The lowest drug numbers, I think, in 37 years. And they were going. Since the fucking hippies. Down to very little. No, they were not. As I just showed you. They were not going down to very little. As a matter of fact, they were spiking precipitously before 2020. Because remember... COVID happened in the first quarter of 2020. Look at the spike right here in tw in 2019. Both went up. Men, obviously, more than women. But even the woman's number gacked up right there. Like, the idea that they were like, they were just going to, they were just, people just weren't, they were so exhausted from winning, they didn't want to take downers because they were already tired. I even worked with China. I spoke to President Xi and I said, you have to do something about the fentanyl that you're making and sending making to Mexico. It, yeah. And he was doing that and he was starting to do it. And I said, you have to criminalize it, meaning death penalty for those people that make it. Yeah, that's what he did. He, he, he dictated to China. Um, uh, by the way, do you think they're still making fentanyl? Yeah. Do you think that they're sending the precursors for it to, to Mexico and the cartels are making it? Yeah. He was going to criminalize it and he had started. And then we had a rigged election. Huh? Wait a minute. You only talked to him about the fentanyl crisis in November of your last year in office when during your entire presidency, it was, it had cleared 60,000 and then shot up to like almost, yeah, there's 70,000 and stayed essentially at that level for three years until it spiked like fucking crazy. You waited till this. 
to go, I think there's a problem. You, it didn't occur to you, somebody when you walked in the door, within a year, somebody didn't bring up, wow, fentanyl's a problem. What, like, And the other people took over, and it's the worst border we've ever had. I believe it's the worst border in the history of the world for any country because there's no country even... Yes, the third world countries, they would be shooting people and setting fire to their boats and throwing rocks at them or some nonsense. And meanwhile, where do you fucking think all the Afghans went? They're in Pakistan and, and Iran. A third world country that would allow people to pour in like they're pouring in now. And I believe the real number could be 15 million people, not three or four million. I yeah, it has to be 15 million. Otherwise, he's a fucking lunatic. You know, in a country of 340 million people with the, the job openings that we have, you'd have to be a fucking moron to, to think the things he thinks about the border and it's only 3 million people. You ha it has to be 15 million in your head. It's 15 million and they're emptying their prisons and they're emptying their, they're putting in uh, people in their jails and prisons. They're putting them into our country. Putting people into their jail, in their jail. Are they shipping the whole jail? Do they just like raise it over the border and just shake it like a like a box of cockroaches? How does it work? And they're putting their mental patients and from their mental hospitals and those kind oh. of places. There, those kind of places. I mean, there's a variety of places where you know nuts hang out. You know, dumping them into our country. Yeah, using a slip and slide, I think, actually. Some of them, I mean, there might be a big water park that they've repurposed. They're saving a fortune. I, by the way, I'd be doing exactly what they're doing. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is a uh, former president of the United States and a, um, a wannabe future president of the United States. It's not going to happen, but whatever. Let's just take it as written. Who is suggesting that if he had the opportunity, he would take the criminals and mental mentally ill in the United States and simply dump them into other countries where they don't speak the language. Yeah, they, that's it, that's what he would do. That's it, think about that for a fucking second. And from their mental that in and of itself, like, I mean, we're all beyond outraged because he's a fucking dipshit. But hospitals and those kind of places, they're dumping them into our country. They're saving a fortune. I, by the way, I'd be doing exactly what they're doing. They're saving a fortune. They're taking their mental patients out. They're taping their prisoners out and they're putting them into the United States. They're putting people that aren't very good workers into the United States. Oh, he's, now he's complaining about the staff at Mar-a-Lago. What a dick. They can hear you. They're in the next room. People that haven't been productive. People that haven't been. Yes, they're, they're going through and finding people who are just lazy and sending them to the United States to steal our construction jobs. Holy shit. I'm I'm surprised that South America doesn't isn't wall-to-wall -wall Aztec temples. If they're sending if the people that I see working who are working under the table or who have migrated here from South America and Mexico, if they're an example of the laziness of South American people and Central American people, good lord, I'm afraid to go down there now. Shanghai eat your heart out. We're taking everybody. We, yeah, we don't care. It's horror. It's killing our country. No, it is not. I we, we literally, we're in a position where if there were more immigrants in the country, uh, there wages would be lower than they are currently, which would the stock market would love. So everybody he says, every time he says something like this, the, all his Wall Street, you know, I wouldn't call them friends. The acquaintances all go, come back we're going to ask the president about the media that has never been fair to him stick around is it do you give him some tissue dr phil we'll get back to jesus that's i thought this was at least the 15 minute part of this but nope it's in trump Okay, Mr. President, back in 2015, our CEO, Joe Seals, formed Right Side Broadcasting to do nothing but become a platform for you, your rallies. We showed the crowds. We turned the cameras. We did. Okay, so it was a contribution in kind to his campaign. So the entire thing was campaign finance fraud. Excellent. Um, uh, uh, imaginary assistant. Yeah. Can you get uh, the FEC on the phone? Yeah. 
It's a uh, 25 minutes and 10 seconds into the clip. Yeah, just yeah, just tell them to watch that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, because they actually have money. He's a broke fuck, but they're not. Start to finish, but I, we only wish everyone was like us, and we think that really the media has not covered you hmm. remotely and hmm. fairly. Hmm. You've covered up stories. They didn't cover. They didn't cover certain stories. What do you think the media is going to be like in 2024? Have they changed at all? Well, it's all going to be chat GPT. So, you know, and chat GPT, I think knows Hunter Biden's laptop personally. They, they, I think they were fucking for a while. So I don't, I, I don't, it doesn't look promising in the way they cover you. Well, not only the media, the FBI goes in and tells Twitter don't cover and it's missing. Information. The laptop was misinformation or disinformation. They use both words. No, you do. Indistinguishably. There's a difference. Which are pretty much the same. Okay. You... No, they are not. One is active. One is passive. You're a moron. This, I mean, that enough, that alone should disqualify someone from being president anyways. If you don't know the difference between disinformation and misinformation, why would we want you near any kind of important decision? Can you tell the, act, the difference between an accident and murder? Nah, it's the same thing to me. Oh, great. Okay, well, we'll, we'll make you a judge. Right down to it. But what's happened is not even thinkable in our country. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, nobody thinks it, so maybe that's true. Uh, the media is fake. It's corrupt. And that includes you, asshole. It's bad. Okay, that's all right. He's whipping out the big words. All of it, but a lot of it, most of it. It's very bad and very... Very bad. Oh, it's getting worse. Dangerous. And it's hard to believe when you think uh, they don't want to have borders. They don't want to have good education. They don't want to have tax cuts. I gave the largest tax cuts in history. I gave the largest regulation cuts in history. They don't want that. Uh, they don't. The media doesn't? Oh, oh you mean because you, you mean like Rupert Murdoch's fucking with you right now. And that's what he's talking about. That's that. This, this is gripe. It's nested in this, this gish gallop bullshit is his problem with Fox currently that all the people on there that aren't kissing his ass are like, what, you know, I'll give you another tax cut. Just back me. Fuck. Cover things like uh, the disaster of Afghanistan, that horrible, horrible period of time, which is the most embarrassing. Oh, you mean the 20 years we were there when we could have gotten out a lot earlier and you ran on getting us out and you never did. And then Joe Biden finally did. And you don't like the way he did it, but you have a magic plan. Tell, you know what? You don't have to tell us how you could have you could stop the Russia Ukraine war in 24 hours and it would be easy and you just have to get him in a room. Just it's been more than two weeks. Tell us your magic plan for getting out of Afghanistan. Interesting time ever. You don't see anything about that. That was just a short story. Right. You know it was a long story. The the 20 years we were in Afghanistan. That was the worst. I believe it was the most embarrassing time in the history of our country. Yeah, that's weird. Honestly, Vietnam, we've had presidents assassinated in the modern age. You don't think it was embarrassing that somebody was able to get to Kennedy? Nixon's resignation? The uh, the Bay of Pigs? The Iran-Contra? No, the media is very corrupt, so you have to fight through it. The advantage you have now is that, because I used to get a lot of press for 2016, but they had no idea. You know, we sort of snuck up on it. What you, you did? Say? We snuck in there and uh, they had... No, you didn't. Joe Scarborough let you call in every fucking morning like you guys were pen pals. Idea. They said, we'll never let it happen again. I mean, they were on record as saying, we'll never let that happen again. Right? After <laughs> yes. Where's the record of that? He's got the notes, right? Oh, there's no... The election. They couldn't believe sure. it. But I got uh, tremendous coverage. And then... Uh, for 2020, they were nasty. No matter what you did, it didn't matter how big a success you had, they were nasty. Yeah, it didn't matter. It's just, and these stupid Americans kept dying from this pandemic, which is all fake anyways. And that continues to this day. And uh, they won't cover positive things. And if something's negative, they'll make it extremely negative. They lie and uh, they put it out. But I think we're getting the word. I mean, we do your shows and we do a lot of other shows. And the Truth Social has been great. Truth Social has been amazing. I mean, it's been one of the great. It's incredible. Like, I don't know if you spent any time there. Of course you haven't. It's uh, it's so impressive. It's, uh, it's so, I, I get so excited. Just talking about it. I'm sorry. I use uh, the concept of Truth Social uh, as melatonin. 
I think things on that whole that whole world of of uh, I call it the world of sort of semi make believe because <laughs> <laughs> he just made that up, and it's uh, amazingly telling. I call it the world of sort of semi make believe. Great. True Social has been amazing. I mean, it's been one of the great. I think things on that whole that whole world of of. Uh, I call it the world of sort of semi-make-believe because who would think that there's value and, you know, the value that's been created, but it's been fake media. Tru you mean truth? So yes, I would agree. Truth Social, it, 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 who would believe it has value? No one. Social's been real media. It's been real. And I get my word out very well through truth. And as you know, uh, Twitter just took me back and Facebook just took me back and Instagram. Is anybody else noticing that? The, the like the hair flap over the left e that, does that s seem odd to anyone like because the other ear and then this side i don't know he goes he has the same barber as ted knight and caddyshack they want me but you know um it's not exciting like it used to be because there's no dialogue there's no uh there's no people fighting a little bit meant on twitter Good Lord. ...fighting, and it's really... Yes, there's no one fighting on Truth Social at all. It is a Donald Trump ass-kissing fest. There's no, there's no like, spirited fucking debate on there. Uh, I don't think they're the same. They're not the same like they used to be. We're really... I think I really get it out to Truth. It goes all over the place. You know, I put out a sure. statement, and you get it. Everybody gets it. They get it. So uh, it's probably the best we've had it in years, you know, when we were on, uh, when I was on Twitter, I could say something that was so perfect, or Facebook, all of a sudden it's red flagged. Yeah. And you know, you talk about the constitution. Yeah, perfectly awful. NARA, where they have the constitution, think of that NARA, the archives, where they have the constitution and the bill of rights red flagged because they're dangerous documents. No, they don't. So uh, I think truth has been, really a, a very big development and it's doing tremendously well millions of people and uh, it's not you're not going to be red flagged yeah we love it um i've been censored on there we yeah, love it i know you do all right let's turn our attention to law and order i mean there's so much crime not only in the big in your family cities of america but it is but, but even here at mar-a-lago who the fuck is anna de rothschild pushing out into the how far away is epstein's house so you bought this place about the same time Epstein bought his house, and it's like, what, less than a mile away? Hmm. Suburbs, and I've always said, no matter what rights you have, if you don't have the right, and you're not comfortable, and you're not, you don't feel safe, then nothing really else matters. Um, what would be your plan to attack the, the crime that is out of control in really every American city? Yeah, I was just, by the way, I drove to... Uh, um, to Best Buy this afternoon, unfortunately a failed mission because the I didn't I have to get a internal hard drive and that's not going to happen because I tried my best. But uh, yeah, the whole place was on fire. I felt like I was in I was in what was left of Portland. One thing you have to do is you have to attack drugs. You know, if you look at it so much. Oh, this he's going to go straight to killing drug dealers because they killed 500 people and you got to shoot them. The crime is caused by drugs. You look at some of these people going in and they rob stores with guns and they're just... They don't even know where they are. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. Ah, 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 ah. It's, 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 who's that? He's a criminal mastermind. Drugs are a big problem. And we were getting that down to a level that we haven't seen in decades. You, well, I mean, yeah. Ignoring it, you mean. The other thing is you have to be tough. If somebody's robbing a store, you have to do what's necessary. When you see thugs coming out by the hundreds out of department stores where they're just breaking in and just, and the police are standing there not doing anything, they want to do something, but they're not allowed to. They don't want to lose their job, lose their pension, lose their house and their family because they take very strong measures against people that are doing their job. And, okay. and uh, so you have to give. He keeps switching. It, we're in pronoun hell with this asshole. Police back their authority. Now, you had a case in Memphis, which was so terrible. But that has to do with five or six people that just went crazy. I mean, whether you had uh, 
regulations or not, I don't think it would have mattered. They went crazy for whatever reason. They just went absolutely bonkers. Bonkers. Nothing sums up five cops beating a man so badly that he dies in hospital f from, I, I believe, a punctured lung and uh, an internal bleeding. Like bonkers. Maybe that maybe we need America needs the anti bonkers act, um, you know, to go after hoodlums, and when when they get the scuttlebutt and decide to take their uh, um, their wacky tobacco out onto the road. But you have to give the police back their authority. There are very few cases like Memphis, relatively speaking. You know, you never hear about all of the great things that happened, the good things, the law and order, the the prevention. Yeah, like all the Capitol Police that did their job against a giant mob, for example. Is that a good example? Crime. But the police have to be given back authority to stop the crime. We are in a crime wave in this country, the likes of which we've never seen before. And a lot of it has to do with Democrats running the cities. New York is a disaster. It's a disaster. Chicago is a disaster. Is it a disaster, though? Atlanta. Atlanta is a disaster. I Got one of the highest murder rates, I think, per capita, the highest. Um, no, I think that's Bakersfield. And all they do is come after other people for other things. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's always been the problem. They come after other people for other things. You know, I mean, I uh, sorry if I'm, I'm racking your brain with uh, specifics. It's really an unfair situation and a no oh dear. Dangerous situation. And you'd almost say, how does a country survive? You know, you talk. You'd almost say that. All these regimes and everything where they don't have crime, they're rough and they're tough and they're not good and it's a bad system. But they show these clips of what's going on in Chicago and what's going on in New York. No cash bail. No cash bail. Who would think of it? Murderers have no cash bail. Uh, but they show these. Well, technically speaking, murder suspects. But all over and other countries don't view our country the same way anymore. So you have to get tough. And what I, by the way, I, then the way they viewed it and when the fucking seventies, the nineties, every time we have a spike. I do, uh, and I did it to a certain extent, but I, you know, you're supposed to let the governor or the mayor take care of their problems. Uh, yeah. That whole state's rights thing. I don't know. But in Minneapolis, as an example, I sent in the National Guard. The governor didn't approve it. I sent it in. You have to do it. They're going to rip down the whole city. That city was going to be gone. No. And I saw... Not like Portland, anyway. And then standing up and the guy's talking about, well, this is a friendly protest. And behind him, the entire city was on fire. I said, these people are crazy. So it's... Demo no, he was talking about the protests themselves in contrast to the riots. He's talking about Ali Velshi. It's a clip they use all the time run cities you don't really have that in the republican run cities it's uh yeah you do the the murder rate per capita is uh, exceeds all of the big blue cities incredible to watch uh so you need law and order yeah we now oh, good all right well we finally came to a conclusion how do you get it uh by giving cops their authority back isn't that something earned by quality behavior we all need it. Okay, last weekend you were in Columbia, South Carolina, and after your great leadership uh, uh, segment, we rolled out the, your team there. Um, you may your great leadership segment, we rolled out your team there. This is brilliant. I'm, I'm now I'm now I'm in on the campaign. I may have to volunteer. Stop at a local ice cream uh, business there, and and that's something that we make fun of Joe Biden for all the fucking time. We we consider it absurd and grotesque when he does it. We hate that he eats ice cream. And then you went to one and fucked up our whole narrative. Way to be an asshole, Don. And you had a moment where uh, an employee took time and asked if they could pray for you, and she said a small prayer over you and your campaign. There are no small prayers. How does that make you feel that America is literally praying for your safety, and they're praying for this country, and they well, I mean, one out of 30 ice cream shop workers, I think. is. You get back in the White House. What a great woman. She said, may I pray for you? And I sort of said, 
what? You know, we're standing in the middle of this place. And it was a nice place with a wonderful owner and wife. That's good. That's how I'd describe it, too. It was a nice place with a wonderful owner and wife. I, I feel like I'm thrust back into the experience. I can, I can almost smell the chunky monkey. And uh, very proud of it and crowded. And there was a lot of love. There was all love. I don't know. It was all love. All of it was love. Love and uh, desserts. We're there. It was great. It was all love. Yes, because your team won't take you anywhere unless it's padded with sycophants. Wasn't somebody in the back of the room doing bad things? Well, thank God. Well, I don't know. You ate the ice cream. Did you notice anything weird about the flavor? It was just pure love for the country. And it was weird. I, the... Their vanilla had a slight, a slight yellowish tint, but I didn't notice anything. It was a little tart for my taste. The former president, it was incredible actually to see, but the one woman wanted to pray and she did, and I guess that got a lot of publicity. It went viral. Were... I guess that got a lot of publicity. That's what you say about prayers. A lot of, yeah, there were a lot of cameras going when she was doing it, and she was terrific. No, it makes you feel very good, and it makes you also feel good to see a business like that where... It's safe and secure. The yeah, it's weird. Biden's America. Food's good and all of Yeah, it, it's funny that Biden's the president. You can walk into a place like that. Those things. Yeah, yeah they, they, they're, they're even hiring. As opposed to the other alternative, which is no good. Which is not good at all. You mean during your presidency? When, right, we come when back that, when, place when that business had to shut down because of COVID? Something called five with 45. That's coming up after the break. Stick around. Oh, great. Is that, he's so boring, they've come up with a gimmick speed round like a morning DJ. We'll get back to our pockets. Getting not get into exclusive. Just give me one word answers if you could. For okay. Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, th that's what this is. This is morning DJ bullshit. All right, welcome back. Let's play a game called Five with 45. And I've got five s quick questions. You just give me one word answers if you could. And if, uh, and if you don't answer right, you get a knuckle sandwich. That's what the five is. Okay, here we go. All right, number one, if you could use one club to play a round of golf, what club would that be? It would be the five iron. Okay. Uh, if you could play a round of golf with anyone dead or alive, who would that be? Can they be both? My father. There you go. Uh <laughs> because I don't remember the combination to the safe and I've sold everything else. A uh, favorite artist or song that's currently on your playlist that you play at Mar-a-Lago or perhaps at the rally. I yeah. like the, uh, oh, the village people. Oh, it's good. So many. But, you know, Lee Greenwood has done. So oh, for fuck's sake. He's done such great work. I know all of his songs. I know all of his song now that I think of it. An incredible job with our opening song. It's not your opening song. You wrote it in like the 80s. And I will tell you, we love Lee Greenwood. We do. We, what's the name of the song? What's the, what's the name of the song? Boom. All right. Uh, when's the last time you drove a vehicle? Golf, uh, golf carts don't count. Well, I've been doing this stuff now for six years, so about six years Here ago. You go. Final question. Who got the Super Bowl this year? Eagles or Chiefs? Well, two really great teams. I mean, yeah, and I didn't even know they were playing until you just told me right now. Eagles and Chiefs. A lot of, you know, sometimes, I think it's the Chiefs because if you look at Chiefs, they wear eagle feathers and the, uh, the Eagles don't do too good. Don't, you know, not good. They, uh, they really did it. I think I won't because politically I like both areas and they like me and I better <laughs> not get myself in trouble. But I will say you have two great teams and maybe the two teams that most expected to be there. So. Yes, those are the teams most people expect to be at the Super Bowl at this point. The ones that are <clears throat> playing it. <laughs> Shit. It's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a great game. Yeah, I don't know. I'll hear about it later. Don will tell me. All right. On that note, thank you, Mr. President, for your time. As always, God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so that, that was, that's, that's to prove to you sucks that this guy actually is still... No, he doesn't have a driver's license. Um... Such bullshit.